Good morning. Good morning. Welcome home to Holy Cross on this third Sunday in Easter. I'm delighted to see this many folks have managed to get here this morning. Uh, for those watching online, two of our three main arteries to the valley have been closed up because of landslides in the area. So I'm um, delighted you're here and I uh, hope that you'll stay afterwards for a time of fellowship together. We do have a few announcements to review with you, and the announcements begin on page 14. But first, let me thank Elaine and the Handbell Choir for sharing your gifts with us this morning. Thank you so very much. Please note that on Tuesday night, gentlemen, it is Men's Night Out. We're gathering at the home of Reverend Jim and Marilee Reed. Uh, the instructions are in here, so if you're planning to attend, uh, please be sure to let Keith Martin know so we can make sure there's enough food. And also note that on Saturday, the last Zoom session of Coffees On will be uh, led by Pan. Uh, we're hoping to have one in, uh, in person, hopefully at the end of the month, but end of, of May. But this is the last time on Zoom, it's at 10 a.m. This is a wonderful time for folks just to get together to share what's going on in their lives. And so that's at 10 a.m. And again, the instructions in your leaflet. And a note, the next Sunday, our regular schedule of worship services. Are there other announcements this morning? Well, that's a first, huh? Okay. <laughs> um, I want to thank Scott Oxford for um, uh, presiding and preaching last Sunday. It was a delight to have him here. Alicia, you do have one? Here at 1245 in Skiles Hall, all women of the church, whether you're members or not, are welcome to attend and participate. So thank you for that reminder. Just something to point out to you on page three, the opening page of the service, is we are in Easter time and we will remain in Easter time, 50 days of Easter until the day of Pentecost. And so that opening acclamation should actually read, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Okay, that's it, that's it. So just be aware of that. And then keep an eye on who's coming in late, because they'll probably say the wrong response. <laughs> that be kind of fun to watch. So no further announcements. Let's take a few moments to quiet our hearts and prepare to worship the living God.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work. He lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed his people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? as though by our own power or piety we had made this man walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
<clears throat> a reading from John. See what the love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ, according to Luke, glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, 
These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. From this morning's collect, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold Jesus in all his redeeming work. I speak to the name of God, our Creator, risen Redeemer, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Probably should mention that I have a bit of a pinched nerve in my lower back and that causes my hips to go out. Never know which one it is, but that's why I'm limping this morning. Um, and if I keel over, it's my hips. I, I'm not having a stroke. It's okay. So <laughs> just give me a minute to recover. But it really is a little un uh, disconcerting at times. Now, one of the amazing things about our revised common lectionary is how often these sacred texts apply to our circumstances in this given moment in time. Today is no exception. See, for the past few days, your vestry has gathered on retreat for a time of discernment, a time of exploration, a time of listening to one another and listening to what it is that the Holy Spirit is saying to us as a parish as we enter this time of transition. And one of the common themes that emerged from our discussions together was the desire that we not lose sight of who we are as people of God and who we are called to be to one another and the greater community. Our thoughts centered on our identity as followers of the risen Jesus Christ today and the continuous transforming impact of Christ living and breathing within us and through us right now. Now, have you ever noticed that throughout the Gospels, whenever the post-resurrection Jesus appeared to his followers, they didn't recognize him? Whether encountering Jesus on the road to Emmaus or appearing to them in an upper room, the immediate response of everyone present was fear. Is he a ghost? Is he a vision? Is he even human? See, there was something very different about the resurrected Christ. Clearly, he had been changed through the resurrection. In rising from the dead, he had not only redeemed the world and made all things new, he himself had become something new. And yet the Gospels tell us, while Jesus does appear to be different, so much so, that his closest friends couldn't recognize him. He was and is still Jesus of Nazareth. He is the same Messiah, our same brother and companion. He was and is the same, only different. Our colic this morning prays that the eyes of our faith would be so open that we behold, we recognize Jesus' redemptive work around us and in us at all times. Now, I find those words almost romantic. Oh, to see with the eyes of faith. I like that sentence. And yet, while we do need to be cognizant of Jesus' ongoing redemptive work in our hearts and our minds, that redemptive work that continues to challenge our priorities and values, there's an even deeper message here. See, if we who claim the name of Christ as our own 
are still the same old physical uh, persons to our neighbors, our families, our friends, one another in our communities, what difference do they notice in us? And if they do see something different, does it say to them, peace be with you, like Jesus said in our gospel reading, or does it make them afraid? You know, pretty much everyone in Jerusalem knew the apostle Peter, the fisherman. They knew him as occasionally brash, sometimes quick to speak and always slow to think. And most people knew that he had run away when Jesus was on trial and even denied knowing him, even though he promised to love and stay with Jesus forever. And yet in this morning's reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we see a different man standing before the crowd. Peter, the one-time disgraced coward, now stands up with boldness to proclaim the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. The redemptive power of forgiveness, of honest-to-God true forgiveness, was so transforming for Peter, it changed his whole demeanor to the very core of his being. Yes, he was the same old guy, and yet he was different, so much so that through his witness to the redemptive power of Christ, as we will read in chapters 3 and 4, the eyes of those who at once did not believe were suddenly opened to the grace and redemption of the gospel, and the number of followers of Jesus exploded into the thousands. Peter was the same, but different. St. John, in his first letter to the church, says that part of being children of God means taking responsibility to be like Christ in all things. John reminds us that the world doesn't always recognize our Lord's followers because, frankly, it never recognized Jesus in the first place. So John says we shouldn't be surprised when people can't understand why we choose to live the way we live. Don't be surprised when people question how we can love our enemies. How can we welcome a stranger, especially those strangers? How can we forgive someone who has wronged us so deeply? How can we feed someone who just always seems to be hungry? John suggests those are good questions because this is not our own doing, but rather simply how God's children choose to live. It's about the power of redemption at work within us. These acts of kindness and compassion are simply how we choose to follow Christ and embody Christ in this community and the world. Yet while the world may not recognize Christ at work within us, John says they are, nevertheless, still watching how we live. And that, how we live, is why we appear different while still being the same persons. Such a change in how we think about and speak about others, how we uphold and embrace the dignity of every human being as created in the image of God, is that transformative, redemptive power leads us to care for the homeless, the needy, the injured, and destitute. It's what makes us different. So much so that our very lives say to each other and our neighbors, peace be with you. Be not afraid and welcome home. Our lessons this morning affirm that the redemptive power of Christ can and should change God's people to their core. We might not always be able to recognize Jesus at work in and around us. The truth is, we are our own worst critics when it comes to reflecting upon our life example as Christians. Nevertheless, the Gospels assure us that we can always encounter the risen Lord Jesus when we worship together, when we pray together, and like those travelers to Emmaus discovered, when we break bread together. The fascinating thing about breaking that bread is that in its breaking, we find and affirm our unity. In many ways, this broken bread symbolizes our own broken lives, our worries, our stresses, our broken dreams, our shortfalls. 
And in that breaking and then sharing, we are made whole again and united together in and with him who says, peace be with you. Be not afraid. Such is the redemptive power of the Eucharist. In fact, it's the redemptive power of all seven sacraments. They each say, be not afraid, peace be with you. And friends, our lives, our life choices should always say the same. The good news of the gospel of the risen Lord Jesus Christ is that we can always find redemption if we choose to seek it. And redemption always transforms us when and if we invite it and allow it to change our hearts and minds so that we do become like Christ to one another and our neighbor. See, our faith is always a choice. A choice that offers peace, grace, mercy, forgiveness, and love to those who will truly embrace it. That is our ongoing redemption. And it's the gift of God to us in the resurrected Christ. May God help us to embrace that redemption in every aspect of our lives so that while we may indeed be the same persons journeying together through a time of transition, we are nonetheless a different people who make all the difference in this community. By God's grace, may the eyes of our faith be open to what it is that God is calling us to be right now so that we behold and continue to behold Jesus in all his redeeming work within you, within me, today and always. Amen. Turning to page six in your service leaflets and standing together, let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our worship continues with the prayers of the people. As found on page 7 in your service.
In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For Joseph, our president, for Roy, our governor, for all elected officials, for this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. We pray for those who have asked for prayers, for those in harm's way, for the unemployed, the lonely, for those who are sick or in need, and those whom we name aloud at this time. Rachel, Lisa, Joe, Derek, Rob. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church in Ataoroa, New Zealand, and Polynesia. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Calvary Church, Fletcher, for the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who are praying the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Jose, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for an end to the war and human suffering throughout the Middle East and the Ukraine. We pray for those who travel this week, especially Pan and Keith, we pray for the grace to demonstrate in our words and deeds the five marks of mission of the Anglican Communion, especially to strive to safeguard the integ integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. I invite your prayers of intercession, either silently or aloud. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for Andy Furr, Andrea McDonough, Lisa Cooper, Mary Watson, Olivia Tester, Mary Jane DeWeese, Ann Isles, and all who celebrate birthdays this week. And for Chuck and Kathy Kennedy, Aaron Koenig and Stacy Bulmer, and all who celebrate wedding anniversaries. We give thanks for those who serve on the vestry and for all the ministries and activities of this parish and we pray God's continued blessing on all who partake of or serve in them. I invite your prayers of thanksgiving, either silently or aloud. <coughs> we will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for John Davidson and all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. give to you my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
But doing this, it means everyone's fingers out of the path. So much better for us, for our health. But here's the most important thing to remember. This is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. And now I say it week after week. But remember, it is made ready for those who love him. And those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith, and you who have little. You who have been here often, and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow Jesus and have failed, come. Not because I invite you. Come because it's the Lord who invites us all. It is his will that those who wish to know him should meet him here. My sisters and brothers, by the mercies of God as we continue in this season of Easter tide, this season of resurrection, let us remember to walk in love as Christ himself walked in love and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice unto God.
Eucharist continues with the great Thanksgiving prayer as found on page 10 in your service leaflets. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us <coughs> in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. <clears throat> On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <laughs> After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, To drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. And bring us to that heavenly country where, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Brother Skiles, and all your saints, 
we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the great of The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the great of blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of the Last Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of the Last Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of the Last Amen. The body of Christ, the Great Heaven. 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 The body of Christ, the great of heaven. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of everlasting life. The body of Christ, the great of heaven. Amen.
Together, let us offer our kneeling hymn. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of the body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with life. and dismissal. <clears throat> May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his grace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.